In our modern society, we uh, are relying uh, on the satellites for an enormous amount of services. Uh, TV broadcast, earth observation, meteo, communication, uh, all these are services which we are, even without, without thinking about this, using every day. And uh, the day these uh, services are not available anymore because of, uh, of a collision, uh, we see an effect on the, on the way we communicate, the way we live today. The objective of this program is really to protect the Earth, to set up a system to protect the Earth uh, against the space hazards, such as uh, the space debris, the space weather effects, or the asteroids or comets which may collide with our planet. Uh, indeed, uh, the concept of SSA is a relatively new concept, but it's really encompassing everything which represents uh, a certain threat coming from space, which would then affect uh, our critical structures in space, like satellites, or on the ground, like big uh, communication networks, or, or pipelines, or, or big cities in case of meteorites. So all this is the subject of the space situational awareness. Uh, there are many competencies already available in the participating states of SSA. And uh, the whole idea of building an SSA system in Europe is to elaborate on the competencies and capabilities which already exist, network them together, identify the gaps which are missing, and then do the developments in a very targeted way. A really uh, interesting goal for 2020, which is the end of this period, which will be to have a pre-operational system already available on one side in terms of structure, in terms of services, and on the other side also to start uh, very, very important uh, developments, like for instance, for instance the so-called space weather mission to Lagrange 5, which is one of the important observation points to improve the accuracy of the prediction in space weather. We are also starting important developments for, for so-called fly-eye telescopes, which precisely in the area of asteroids and comets give the possibility uh, on, on the Earth to detect these dangerous events like closing, uh, close approaches of, uh, of asteroids to the Earth and risks of collision, and then even issue warnings when necessary to populations with at least an advance timing of uh, three weeks or more. The problem with the space debris is that uh, there is, unfortunately, an increasing population of space debris orbiting, uh, orbiting the Earth. And uh, specifically in uh, what we call the low Earth orbits, orbits between 500 kilometers and 2,000 kilometers above the Earth, which are very interesting and populated by our satellites, but it's also populated by space debris. And uh, there is an always um, a very high risk of collision between these space debris and our satellites. And we have to realize that the collision between a piece, even a small piece of 10 centimeter, at a very high speed of 10 kilometers per second, uh, simply destroys the satellite immediately. So um, this needs to be prevented. And uh, what we always do, we, um, we um, do so-called conjunction warnings. So we, we warn the satellite operators that there is a risk of collision with an identified space debris, and then the spacecraft owner can take uh, measures to prevent this collision by doing a so-called collision avoidance maneuver. So this is the first point. The second point is that in order to do this, you need to have a precise knowledge about the population of these space debris and where they are located. And this uh, is today only available uh, at the extent which we need outside Europe, in the United States, in the so-called US Space Surveillance Network. And uh, we have so-called data sharing agreement with, with us, with many national agencies in Europe as well. But we do not have in Europe an autonomy for this. And uh, this is one of the objectives also of this uh, segment of SSA in general, is to have uh, at least a certain degree of autonomy in the data of all the three domains of SSA and, of course, of the related services. If we don't do anything and we, we leave the satellites unattended and uh, exposed to the risk of collision, then according to the law of statistics, at a certain point in time there will be a collision. And the collision will have two effects. The first one, the most visible, is the satellite will get out of order. The second one, the satellite itself will be transformed in a multitude of debris. And there will be a kind of avalanche effect, uh, which will by itself increase uh, the number of debris. We have seen such effects uh, when satellites have collided. There was a, an anti-satellite test conducted by the Chinese uh, in, the, in the years before 2010. And this has uh, enormously increased the, the population of space debris. And this needs to be prevented by all times, by all means. If we don't prevent uh, the increase of this space debris population, then the risk is that the 
uh, orbits which we are using for these low Earth orbit satellites will simply not be exploitable anymore.